Hello, my friends. I know we watch people make up their faces, people that are in their obviously 30s, 20s, but even the women in their 50s and 60s do a great job. However, when we get into our 70s, and particularly me, who is in my almost approaching my mid 80s, the facial makeup is different, or at least it looks different on these faces. And our faces go through quite a bit of change between the 60s and the 70s, as many of you probably will notice. And so I went on YouTube to find women who are in their mid 70s, late 70s, or perhaps 80s, to see if any of them do makeup on older faces. And of course, I did find Rockstar Mom, who I love dearly. Sandra Hart has done makeup, although uh, uh, everyone seems to have gone more into motivational or clothes or or just fun chatting rather than too much makeup anymore. And, and I guess I can understand that. However, I did find Nicole Johnson making up her mother and other older women. I found Christopher Hopkins, the makeup guy, who made up his mother, and that was fascinating. She's 80, I believe. And several other women, if, if I can remember the names, I might put them in the description box, who have done makeup. One recently, I saw Cherilee's box of chocolate. She did a lovely woman in her mid-70s who had a beautiful face, uh, normal wrinkles, etc. But her makeup was gorgeous when Cherilee finished. And to me, the glow of her face, what she did with, with highlighter and makeup was exquisite. And she was absolutely beautiful. So, so today I'm making up my uh, wise face, as Dr. Dre says. I love the way she calls us wiser, not older. Also, uh, one of my little tips on hairdos and using a few little things to help us along, including the dry shampoo and the little forms. So stick around. Hope you enjoy. So I'm starting with my uh, bare face, which basically has my application of castor oil. As you all know, I can't put any makeup on my face unless I put castor oil on first. And that way it helps to glide the makeup on very smoothly. Black Jamaican castor oil, always under my makeup. Now it's my e.l.f. primer. And this is just called an illuminating primer. And I will do two or three pumps of that and then just rub it on with my fingers. <laughs> a lot of people would do this with a brush. I just haven't gotten around to it, even though I have some really, really nice brushes. Now I'm back to putting the primer on before I put my camo on. This is an e.l.f. camo concealer. And this I love. I call this my best friend because it does cover up all of the spots on my cheeks from the sun from years ago. And I go over the lines here, a little bit on the laugh and the marionettes. I've done this so many times. <laughs> As I told you, and I think you know this, I didn't start wearing makeup until about two, two and a half years ago. Only after I got on YouTube and started watching YouTube ladies. I was oblivious to all this before that. And I noticed at that time that Rockstar Mom and Sandra Hart were still doing makeup and products. And I tried to follow them. But generally, most of the makeup people are young people or women in their 50s, perhaps women in their 60s. I would love to see what more women are doing in their late 70s, mid 70s even, and 80s. And I did find a few. And it's a big difference, the way everything turns out, whether you have wrinkles sagging or whether you have the dark spots or various other uh, problems, it's a different ball game. But I have watched someone 
whose features totally change by putting makeup on. And even with wrinkles here, wrinkles here, this beautiful glow does come on their faces. And, and I was so happy to see that, to see older women with makeup or someone making them up. Now, a lot of the older women weren't, weren't making themselves up. Some of the uh, gals were making their faces up for them, but it was amazing. Now, what I have discovered as I watch women do their older eyes, and my eyes are hooded, so it's going to be a little more difficult, is that putting a good concealer on the lids to conceal all the pigment. And obviously we more mature women do have more pigment. And I do have a couple of little old red spots up in there for quite a while. So I'm going to put more a heavy on my mobile lid, a heavy coat of this. And they say that on the older eyes, when I say they say, I don't know who I'm talking about, but in general, all the way up to the brow. And I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes. Now, as you know, when I try and put eye makeup on, I get it all over my face. But the general opinion is to wait until it dries and then you can use a Q-tip. Now, recently I saw a tip of someone using a spoolie to flake the mascara especially that got on your lids and ruined the makeup and the spoolie evidently flakes it off and doesn't ruin the lids. Now, while this is somewhat drying on my eyelids, I am going to put some blush on. And the blush that I've been using is also a product from e.l.f. Now the blush is going to start at the top of your ear up here, and I'm going to come down. I try not to go lower than the nose. That should be right here. Maybe come in a little bit under the cheekbone and this way. Now, it's much better now that I have a new one to give it that contour effect around here. Now, remember you're working, <laughs> I'm working on an 80 plus year old face. So this is going to come out a lot different than it might come out on a 30 year old, even a 50 or 60 year old face. You've got to know that. So we're trying to make the best of our features at this point in our life. And that's all we're doing. I still seem to have some cheekbones, so I'm gonna try and play those up a little bit by keeping the blush. I don't use a contour. Maybe one of these days I'll learn how to do it. Now, as you've noticed, by the way, I did go into my bedroom and fix my hair. I wasn't able to do it on camera here, but I do have two of the white. I did take one of those donuts, cut it in half, and I've used two whites on the sides of my face to, to give that little puff uh, and I, my hair is back with one of my ribbons now in the back. I did secure them with some bobby pins to keep it up here. And uh, it's, it's a good look for when you want something off your face like I do right now. And what my secret is that I have discovered is that on all of these women that I saw being made up that are in their 70s and late 70s, I didn't see any over 80, but... The one thing that I felt made their appearance look wonderful was glow. This is my infallible L'Oreal glow stick, and it's a highlighter in a pale pink. It goes with the glow that I think makes a difference. Now, right now, I don't think you can see a glow, but I put it on the ball of my cheek right here. Smile on the ball and then whoopee up right up here because the idea is to lift everything up. That's why you start with your blush or your contour. Up we go. Down the bridge of the nose. Maybe a little distracting, but I think it's fun. In the middle of the face and forehead and down here on the chin. Now the big thing to do is to blend. Now can you see 
the difference. I can, and I like it. I think it really is uh, different. Now for the eyes. So I'm following Emily Noel's eye right now with the e.l.f. And it's a very pale pink shimmer. Here it goes. Now the idea is to put it on the whole lid. This is my new palette. Everyone laughed at my old one, was so used up and funny. I only used two colors from the other one, but I do love this because it has some nice light colors, especially nude. And this is Rimmel, under $5. I just love it. Look at all those colors. So there are some that have a glitter to them, not glitter, it's just a, sh a shimmer. And there are some that are very pale. And now I'm just going to go into a very light tan and I'm going to go over this, hoping that it doesn't come out too dark. I'm not wild about this pink yet. Maybe it's too pinky, but we'll see. Now I did see Charlie's box of chocolates this morning, I believe, and she was making up an older woman. I believe she was in her mid seventies. She did a beautiful job with this woman, um, the, the woman that I felt had such a glow and shine to her face and loved her lipstick and particularly her eyes too. I think I'm going to try this one, this um, Maybelline that is the Sensational Lashes. We'll see how this works. Now the brush is a very skinny brush for some reason or other. Usually, I think in the beginning, you would want to go on with a thick one. Someone else said, and I don't think it was her, was someone that said, with every, with every application, you blink. So it's blink, 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 blink. Don't just hold your eyes like this. It will go on better if you blink every single time. So what does it look like? Think it makes a difference? Well, let's try it on the other one. Oh, this is also, by the way, this one has the bendable brush. Do you see the way that bends as I put it in there? Now, what that does, I don't know, but we'll see. Hmm. All right, here we go. I'll hold this up so you can watch while I do this. Blink, 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 blink. You know, I think that's the way I did it anyway, now that I'm doing it. I do feel the effects of the bendable brush. You know, they say you should look for separation, volume, length. And there's one more thing that I can't quite remember. Probably about 30 seconds in between coats. I had never heard that before. That if you wait too long, that the lashes get too dry from the first coat and it won't go on. It'll be flaky or the lashes will be too hard. I think I've done enough blinking. Now I will go down here because I do like it under my eyes. Well, are they separated? They seem to have a volume. They're not too clumpy. I don't this think. This might be the finished look. I have that lipstick on. Uh, this time, instead of my normal Palladio uh, Violet Wine, I, which I love the dark lipsticks, by the way, I did put on a Revlon that I recently got, which is a, a mauve wine of some sort. And I like this. Love my glow. So that's the look of makeup on an 84 and a half year old woman. And it was a lot better than my bare face, which I showed you. Now I do have to um, always say, because people want to know, I've not had any procedures done, surgical or otherwise, on my face. I don't even think I've ever had a facial, professional facial. I have very dry skin. I have uh, not ever used Botox or laser or fillers. Uh, this is this is me, and all my life I have said this so many times, I feel like you must be getting bored with it, but I have had to put very greasy 
moisturizers and creams on all my life because it made me feel better. My face was always so tight and I would put Nivea. I love my Nivea, the cream in the blue jar. And I've used that for years and years and years. And sometimes Vaseline, sometimes, well, always my castor oil under my makeup and sometimes some other serums just because they make me feel good. So this is it. This is the face, makeup, and hair of a very mature woman. I heard someone describe us as wise women. I think it was Dr. Dre. I just love her. And I like that. This is not expensive makeup too. This is all what, what they call drugstore makeup. I wasn't so wild about the pink. So I'm going to go back to Sugar Puff and Fluff when I watched her video, she was trying to show us how to do hooded eyes and get a good mobile lid. And when I did that one, I did it one eye in a video a couple of videos ago. And I did use this creamy, sort of a thick glow on the lids. Now I've just put it on again because I'm going to change this look. I'm going to try and do a little bit of a darker color maybe a darker taupe, but I don't want to go too dark. So I'm going to go right next here, next to this big one. Tap. I love that. Okay. And tap again. Now, here we go. Coming out a little darker in here, or I will mess it up. I think I like this better than the pink for some reason or other. Pink's not me. Now I do have more of a crease with this look, don't I? What do you think? I think perhaps I like the lid a little better and perhaps a little bit of the darker getting rid of the pink. So there we go. Keeping everything on the upswing, up, up, up. I've realized that I have forgotten one of the most important things of all. Your eyebrows are what they say shapes your face. And many of us have lost a bit or the color has changed. Now my eyebrows have still stayed dark for some reason or other, even though my hair turned white, but I have lost a hair in between in here. And I do fill those in. I've picked up a, a toque pen and I don't have my glasses on, so I don't know who has made it. It has a little spoolie on the end. And hopefully it's a lighter color than what I've been using. And I will very lightly do some strokes going straight up, fill in and fill in the tail a little bit. Now we'll do it here. Let's see. Don't want them to be too close together. Does that look better? I think it does. A little bit up here. I do like a full eyebrow. And fortunately, I have a lot of space between my eye and my brow to be able to try and make that fake crease and help my hooded eyes. So there you go. Maybe a little more under here. Use the spoolie to brush them up. That's it. Now in the next video, I won a Venus eye massager. I guess that's what you call it. I won it on Sheila the Old Gal's video last Sunday. And it's supposed to arrive the end of this week. And it's definitely for hooded eyes. I wanted to know more about it. So I did go on YouTube and quite a number of women have demonstrated this. I'm very excited to use it. Thank you, Sheila. And when it arrives, I will be demonstrating it and showing you how it works and start reviewing it, which means using it probably five times a week. Well, thank you all for stopping by today. I haven't been able to answer all of your comments and well wishes and prayers for Moose and myself during these last two weeks. 
and I want to thank you immensely. I appreciate them and I have read every single word. It just gets a little busy around here, plus the extra things that we're doing to try and stay Lucy well. Lucy is a little better each day. He still has his cough, but he's on medication, all sorts of things for the cough. Still test positive, and I am still testing negative by some miracle. Goodbye for now. See you soon. God bless us all.